Numerical Computation, Chapter 5, Video 7. We now do a detailed convergence analysis for Newton's method. Let R be the root so that f at r equal to 0 and r equals to gr. It's a fixed point iteration. And also, um, from the previous analysis, we know that's the best fixed point iteration, so g prime of r equal to 0. So we define the arrow, and the arrow at step k plus 1 equals to x k plus 1 minus r, the exact distance in absolute value. And then since x k is computed as an iteration, fixed point iteration, so it's g at x k, and r, we write it as g r, because r is a fixed point. So we have done this kind of a manipulation before. Now, and something new, and I will write out a Taylor expansion for the function g at x k expanded at r. Okay, so g of x k is going to be written as everything for g evaluated at r. So the first term will be g r plus the distance, so x k minus r here times g prime at r plus. Now we're going to stop. We only write the first two terms exact, and for the third term we use the Taylor theorem. That is, this will be a half times x k minus r square times g double prime of some cosi, um, which lies between x k and r. And now remember, g prime at r equals to zero, which means this guy is zero. So that term will actually vanish. So getting rid of that term, all I have now is gr plus a half of xr minus xk minus r square and g double prime cosi. Okay, so plug this expression back into the arrow formula here. So we see that ek would equal to, so this minus that, all that you remain is this term. So you get this term in absolute value and we notice that xk minus r is actually arrow at the previous iteration. So we have an iteration of arrow. So the arrow at the previous step squared multiplied by some constant will be your next arrow. Okay. So let's denote um, the constant here a half times g double prime cosi to be bounded by a constant m and will be the maximum value this guy can have and then we can write that ek plus 1 is less than or equal to some constant m times ek square. Note that I put the 2 to be in red. That 2 is most important. If one has an error estimate of this form with a power 2 there we call this type of convergence a quadratic convergence. The quadratic refers to the number 2. So we can easily see that this convergence would be very fast. Think if your ek is 10 to the negative 2, for example, and then you perform one more iteration, and then the arrow suddenly drop down to 10 to the negative 4. And then if you do one more iteration, the next arrow will drop down to 10 to the negative 8. It goes down super fast. So we have this theorem. It says that if you have this error estimate, then the error goes to 0 if the initial guess is sufficiently close. That is, if E0 is sufficiently small. And we'll give a proof for that. So the theorem means that um, the constant m here can be big, but it doesn't bother me. As long as e0 is sufficiently small, no matter how big the m is, I will still have convergence. So this is very different from the regular fixed point iteration, which has linear convergence. There, the constant m, little m, must be less than 1.
So don't get confused, these two are different. Okay, let's see a proof for that convergence. So we know that E1 is less than constant m times E0 square, and I'm going to write E0 square into two terms, and I join the first E0 with the m. Now I specify how small E0 has to be. I say E0 is sufficiently small such that m times E0 is strictly less than 1. So this guy here is less than 1. Then I conclude E1 is less than E0. So the arrow is decreasing at this step. So furthermore, this also means that m times E1 now will be less than m times E0, which is less than 1 by my assumption. And therefore, the next iteration, E2, which is less than m times e1 times e1 again. I group the first e1 with m, and then I know this guy is less than 1 because I just showed it. So I show now e2 is less than e1. And then also m times e2 will be less than m times e1, which is less than 1. And you see this um, argument could be easily and iterated and by a standard induction argument we can conclude that ek plus 1 will be strictly less than ek for all k. Therefore, error is strictly decreasing after each iteration, and therefore it goes to 0, and the iteration converges. Now that we know Newton's method always converges if e0 is sufficiently small, and next time we'll take a look at some examples and see Newton's method in action. Hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.